move forward. And now we will hear from Kyrie Irving at the podium. I'm good. Hey, Kyrie. Um, considering everything that's going on this offseason, um, Kevin was just up here, obviously. Can we get a timeline? <laughs> I can give one. Can we get a healthy timeline just so we don't miss anything here, just so we can get everything out right now. So when we start the season, all this could be behind us. So can we go through a timeline? Does somebody want to interject here, or do you want to take your crack at it? Uh, well, Respectfully. Sure. Uh, when I say from the offseason, I'm saying from the point where you guys got swept to uh, obviously you're having your contract negotiations, uh, which at least from the outside looked like they might have been contentious at points, um, to deciding, okay, I'm just going to opt into the one year. And then KD uh, obviously saying, well, I want to be traded. Um, KD was just saying up here that his reasoning was that he didn't like the way the culture was going. The guys were not being held accountable. Um, in your mind, A, do you agree with that? in terms of the culture not being what it should have been last year. And in your particular case, just individually with you, are you confident that you're going to be here long term and that you can come to a contract agreement to be here for more than just this year? Yeah, well, I honor all that. Uh, you know, when I say I honor it, it's just all of those events taking place. I mean, it was a lot uh, just on my shoulders. Uh, just going back home, knowing that we got swept the way we did, and to be honest with you, it was probably the first time, or one of the, you know, only times in my career where I felt embarrassed leaving the court. And there's been a trend that's happened over the last few years, especially when I uh, thinking about my playoffs and thinking about how I've performed in them. And I went back and watched a lot of film, and I and I had a lot of reflection time and just gave me peace of mind knowing that there was something more to strive for coming into this next season. There was something, um, you know, different that we were going to bring this year in this locker room. And it was easy to make that decision to come back because I knew I wasn't willing to give up on something that I hadn't seen all the way through. And not perfect in terms of the way I handle situations and relationships that go on only, not only in this building, but in my life. So I won't claim to have everything figured out, but I, I definitely use this summer to maximize on getting to know the people around me, the people that I'm going to be not only working with, but on this journey with, and give them support in a way where I knew that they, were, they knew they can hold me accountable and I can hold them accountable. So just meeting them where they are. And it was just a lot. Like hearing Kev want a trade request, I opt in. It's awkward. <laughs> it's, it's very awkward. I'm sitting at home like... I don't know what to think of it, but because there's a trust that we have within each other, I just ultimately want to see him do well and be happy. So if that wasn't within our organization, I was going to have to accept that and move on. Uh, and I knew that I could move on um, and get to a place where I knew Kev could be comfortable and everybody could be comfortable, Sean, Joe, just our whole entire family and culture in which we speak on, I think it needed... Uh, you know, some honest conversations, and that's what we did this summer, and that's what we had. So to reflect on it, I hope I answered a little bit of it. Uh, you know, there's a big timeline, a lot of days in the summer where the offseason has uh, taken its own emotions and courses and, uh, you know, thoughts on what's going to happen. So I tried to just center in on what I want to accomplish, and that was just focusing on being the best teammate I can be and being on a great team and what that means to me and really embodying that action every single day and not just saying it. So I don't want to get too wordy or too preachy up here, but I had a lot of time to think and making the decision to come back to Brooklyn was the best one for me, best one for me to fit in here and uh, just figure it out along the way as we, as we get this party started. Hey, Kyrie, touch on this a little bit, but if you can kind of speak to Kevin's trade request, and were you surprised by it, given how close you two are? I mean, did you stay out of it when it was going on? Did you try to recruit him back to Brooklyn? And, you know, did you see some of the validity, obviously, in, in his complaints about it? Or, or what made him, what, what yeah. made him ask? When you say it? recruit, yeah. what do you mean? Like, did I recruit him back? Like, or like, just Yeah, to, to make him rescind the trade request, yeah. It was, it was on Kev from the beginning, and I honored his request, and I understood it. Uh, there was a level of uncertainty in this building, uh, not just for last year, but for the last few years. And that accountability that he asked for 
should be available and accessible at all times, and we should have that type of environment. So I echo the same sentiments, and I felt the same way. Um, but we both knew we, I don't want to say we both knew, I won't speak for him, I, I just felt like the awkwardness I say, you know, we, I speak on when he asked for it, it just, it's just one of those shocking things. You know, you have it as a best friend and you're watching your best friend go through now the other side of the media storm that comes with this trader request and being in the middle of, uh, you know, it's kind of like a cluster, you know what I mean? Just like all of this, you know, all the stories that we, we've come up with, all the narratives around this team that it's hard to answer every single question you guys have about us and what our intent is. So I'll do my best uh, to just say that, you know, I honored what Kev had uh, going on and I was wishing him the best, but this was the best opportunity for him and that's the best opportunity for me and we feel good. And it's not just about us, it's about how great we are as teammates and our team. Just great team, man. That's all I'm going to keep saying. Hey, Kyrie. Uh, this time last year, it, it seemed like sort of a matter of time until you got the extension. Um, it didn't happen. Is that... Like, do you say, okay, I'm going to get it, I'll have a good year, they're going to pay me, or is there any, like, doubt in your mind that maybe it's not going to happen here? Uh, we had some internal conversations at the end of the season, and we started to have uh, some that I felt were going in the right direction, but it just didn't end up well going uh, into free agency and what that looked like uh, for the long term. And I understood all the Nets' points, and... I respected it and I honored it. And I didn't appreciate how me being unvaccinated all of a sudden came to be a stigma within my career that I don't want to play or I'm willing to give up everything to be a, a voice for the voiceless. And which I will stand on here and say that that wasn't the only intent that I had was to be in the voice of the voiceless. It was to stand on something that was going to be bigger than myself and that I was going to understand probably far into the future. You know, I don't, I don't know when. But I'll get back to my point in saying that there was a level of uncertainty of what this was going to look like of me coming back, and I had questions. They were answered, truthfully, and that's all I needed. And now it's just having the support around me and giving the support to my teammates, and we go from there. I gave up four years a hundred and something million deciding to be unvaccinated and that was the decision because contract get vaccinated or be unvaccinated and there's a level of uncertainty of your future whether you're going to be in this league whether you're going to be on this team so i had to deal with that real life circumstance of losing my job for this decision so i, w I was dealing with all of those emotions while trying to uh secure my fu my future for my family ultimately so there's a lot of decisions that had to be made, but a lot of truthful conversations that gave me peace of mind to come back and, and really uh, just be all in. Kyrie, right here in the middle. You said you've used this summer to get to know people you're going to be taking this journey with. What have you learned from Ben Simmons, and how do you think that his style fits with this team? It's not too often that you get a chance to see a 6'10 guy do the things that he does, and we can talk about the intangibles. We can talk about all his strengths. Um, but I, I think what I've, I've been able to observe just from afar as a competitor, um, you know, for the past few years, but now as a teammate, is just his resolve and his resiliency. He, he wants it. Whatever greatness looks like for him, he wants it. And when you're around other great people and you're in a great environment where you can be supported when, you, you're, when you're going through your ups and your downs, I think that uh, that can help ease the journey. And uh, th that's ultimately what I what I would like to play within this position and this, this role on our team is uh, alongside all our guys just being a level of uh, guidance for him and being able to protect him when needed, but also knowing that he's a, he's a big boy. He can handle it. And uh, he doesn't shy away from the moment, and I like that, and I've seen it since he was in high school. Uh, we've had a connection of playing for the same high school coach with Kevin Boyle, so we know what it's like to get yelled at and get mother effed all the time and championships, championships, championships and being held accountable to a higher level. And that's uh, the best environment to be in because it brings the best out of you. So I just want to see him bring the best out of himself and we have to help him as teammates do that. Hey Kyrie, j just for clarity from your previous comments, was it, as far as your talks with the Nets, was it get the extension and be vaccinated or 
play this out and be unvaccinated and deal with the rest, you know, on the back end. And secondly, yeah. when KD was talking about accountability and culture, I'm assuming he had those conversations with people individually. How did that hit you when he said that? Well, I sit and listen, and I'm a student um, because he's been through a lot and he has experience. Uh, so I, I just honored his wisdom and what he had to offer, and he's seen championship runs. He's been a part of them, won some and lost some. Uh, and uh, I just want to hold space to be able to listen and, and offer advice where I can and just be held accountable to where he feels comfortable at that level so we can match each other. So just meeting each other where we are and those conversations that we had and he had with others, I'm sure, uh, really stemmed from the foundation of just wanting the best, uh, and not just for himself, but for others as well. And he's a selfless person, so always expect him to do the right thing and, and hold everybody accountable and, and do it in a positive way. And uh, sometimes uh, it's not going to look pretty, and that's okay. We accept him for who he is, just like I accept everyone here for who they are. So uh, we meet him halfway there. And then your first question. Sorry. But no, good. Um, with, with, with your contract talks with the Nets. Oh, okay. About, yeah. We, we were supposed to have all that figured out before training camp last year, and it just didn't happen because of the status of me being vaccinated and unvaccinated. So I understood their point, and um, I just had to live with it, and it was a tough pill to swallow, man. Honestly, tough pill. Hey, Guy, <clears throat> two questions. Um, with regard to the contract, there were a lot of reports early in the summer then that you might – you know, go somewhere in a sign and trade. You might sign for the minimum or space or whatever somewhere. Was there ever a moment where you thought you actually were on the verge of leaving? And then just more of a big picture question. Uh, nobody doubts the talent, obviously, on this roster with you, KD, and Ben Simmons, but Ben hasn't played in a year and a half. The three of you have never played together. You guys must even have some questions yourself about what this eventually looks like. So uh, the contract and then just what you think this team actually could be with all of this presumably behind you guys. It's going to be hard to play the hypothetical game with you guys. You guys are the best at it. So it's, uh, it's going to be a long journey just uh, ahead of us because there, is, there are those obstacles with health and questions on health. And honestly, the most healthy team wins every single year, majority of the time. And we, we want to be in that race. And in order to be healthy, it can't just be physically. It has to be mentally. It has to be emotionally. And we have to have some synergy um, as a team where we understand our highs and lows, strengths and weaknesses, and we go from there. Uh, but the sky's the limit. I don't want to say that as a cliche, but it really is because we don't know what this team is going to paint on this canvas this year as of yet. But we have the drive. We have the motivation. We're saying all the right things. And now it's just to act on it and do it in a way where it reflects a, a great brand that we can be proud of and we can stick to every single night. So. Uh, that game plan starts with our coaching, coaches holding us accountable to a level, allowing Steve to be who he is, allowing our, allowing our coaches to be who they are, allowing our player coaches to do what they do, management looking for great opportunities, and uh, ultimately us, us as players is putting on a show every night where the win column is reflective of how well we are connected as a team on both ends of the floor and playing complete games. And Yeah, and then the first comment, yeah, it was just about were you ever close to something else, somewhere else? Were you close to being gone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were options, uh, but not many. I tell you that because, uh, again, this, this stigma, if whether or not I want to play, whether or not I'm going to be committed to the team, which I thought was really unfair at times, but also the timing was ideal to be able to put that on me because I wasn't available. So now that I'm here and actually present at media day and not on a Zoom call, and I can take pictures and be with my teammates and connect to everybody, it feels even better. Uh, so it's exciting time to um, you know, be in this environment and being able to move past what we did last year and the years prior. And it's year four for me in my home state, you know, my home region. So I'm, I'm t I take that very... Uh, serious, and uh, I'm very prideful about the example I set for this next generation as I handle uh, these next chapters of my life. Hey, Kyrie, um, you, you talked about kind of being embarrassed a little bit after getting swept. 
Uh, and then we also spoke about the accountability factor. Just how do those two things inform how you approach this season as, I guess, maybe any differently from any other season? Man, I'd, I'd be lying to you if I told you it wasn't fuel to the fire. It's, it's definitely a lot of fuel to the fire, but it wasn't just because we, we got swept and it was because it was Boston or any of the emotional ties to that. It was, it was because of how things collapsed towards the end of, of last season. And, um, and just a lot of details that I wasn't a part of, that I missed, and we just couldn't make up for time. And uh, now that we have a, a new page to turn with everyone healthy, I just look forward to, you know, saving um, you know, all these moments where I, I felt like there was levels of doubt of whether or not I was going to play, whether or not I was going to be on the team, teammates, or anything like that. Any small doubts, I, I don't want to have any doubts or any regrets. Just come in with an understanding that things are going to be imperfect at times, but handling it responsibly and communicating goes a long way. So great lessons to, to be learned uh, from those moments. Kerry, first, I just want to clarify one more time. Before we're, we're going to be best friends by the end of the year. I, we already are. I mean, you, you, you think we're best friends right now, but by the end of the year, we're going to be, we're going to be, gonna be best. You're going to give me sure. a hug. You're going to be like, look, we had no, I had to do my year. job, but <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. That, I think that's a fair trade off. By the end of this For year, sure. we can say that and somebody clip this up. Me and you are going to be here. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. True detective season two. You and me. Uh, as far, just to clarify one more time, are you saying before last season, the organization told you if you got the vaccine, your extension would be there? These were these were conversations, and, and I don't I don't want to. Again, you you're perfect at this. You just bring emotion, situations. How how are you feeling? And very investigative. This is investigative journalism you're doing here. Whatever it needs to be on the day. Okay. I honor that. Uh, but on a serious note, uh, I was, I felt like I was forced with an ultimatum um, of whether or not I had a contract or not, and whether or not I could be on the team or be around the team, whether or not I was vaccinated. So tough conversations again that were had, and we both left out of there with respect, and I understood where they were coming from as an organization, Joe, and representing the team. And then also he understood where I was coming from. I was a uh, you know, definitely put in that position where I had to make a decision. So. And given all that happened last season, this summer, heading into this year, why should people believe that this is going to work and you guys can get back to the level you want to be at and contend for a title this year? Yeah, I, I'm not focused on convincing people to believe in us. I'm, it's too much energy, you know, spent on that wasted energy trying to convince people and to believe on whether or not we can accomplish a championship this year. Um, just going to let our actions lead. I've talked enough. It's just going to let our actions lead and enjoy the actual process of crafting and getting past some of, uh, I'll say, like the gray area within our, our league. You know, it's, 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 it's very, very human, very transparent. Let's keep it that way. And I feel like we can accomplish a lot. But convincing you guys and you all, I don't have the energy this year. So I love you. Thanks, Kai.